Hi everyone, I am Boris Dalstein, author of the paper Vector Graphics Complexes, together with Rémi Ronfard and Michael van der Pan. In this video, I present the PowerPoint slides that I presented at SIGGRAPH 2014, in case you couldn't attend or want to see the presentation again. The slides are available on the project website that you can find in the description of this video. Feel free to download them, modify them, distribute them, and present them, for instance, in a reading group of your lab or for a graphics course. So first, let's recall briefly what vector graphics is. You basically have two approaches to represent an illustration. The first one is the pixel-based approach, and the second one is the vector-based approach, and is the subject of this presentation. So an image is described by mathematical primitives, such as this circle, and a direct advantage is that it is resolution independent. Fake graphics is everywhere, really. So every logo, font, and many, many illustrations are vector graphics. But uh, very surprisingly, most vector graphics systems today, they still use a traditional and very limited representation that we call SVG. It is made of open curves and closed curves that you can optionally fill with a color or not. By using a large number of such primitives, it is possible to create arbitrarily complex illustrations such as this lovely cat. We now explain why this representation is very limited. It does not truly support shared edges and therefore they must be faked using independent objects. Also, it does not truly support multi-way joints and they must be faked as well using independent objects. As a consequence, these three-way joints must be represented with independent curves, which forces the artist to create the fill color as yet another independent object. In total, this simple cat must be represented with 43 independent objects, including some redundant geometry, which makes editing or animating the cat a real nightmare. What's missing is a good representation for the topology of this drawing. A simple way to represent this topology is called planar maps. So given as input a set of curves, we can compute their intersections, which define a partition of the canvas into disjoint faces. So this is a planar map. So it's able to represent multi-way joints as well as shared edges. However, it introduces unwanted faces caused by unwanted intersections. For instance, in this case, we would rather connect the whiskers to the interior of the face. But this is not possible because planar maps do not support overlapping. Similarly, if this cat is represented as a planar map, then the two front legs are topologically connected here, which obviously do not capture the correct semantics of this drawing. So instead, we would prefer two overlapping legs to be able to extend one of them, revealing the other, but this is not possible with planar maps. So basically, on the one hand, we have SVG made of overlapping objects, giving the artist a lot of freedom, but it does not support shared edges or multi-way joints. And on the other hand, we have planar maps, which overcome these limitations, but the price to pay is the lack of overlapping which is a basic feature provided by SVG. In our paper, we introduced vector graphics complexes. It is a novel representation inspired by the structures traditionally used for 3D topological modeling, such as a radial edge or the selective geometric complex. It shares all the benefits of planar maps, but without sacrificing the overlapping feature. We now show how this works in practice by completing the drawing of these cats. So first, I'm going to select the sketching tool and draw the outline of the ear. It's automatically snapped to nearby edges. So now I select a pink color and with the paint bucket, I click to create a face. Since uh, the topology of the ear is correctly represented, it can be easily edited, including three-way joints or shared edges. So now 
let's try to draw the whiskers in the same fashion. So first uh, I choose a black color and then I select the sketching tool and I naively draw the three whiskers. Unfortunately, we can see that it behaves like planar maps and therefore unwanted faces have been created. So let's undo this since it's not what I want. Instead, I start by disabling the automatic computations of intersections. Only then I draw the three whiskers. This time, we can see that they are independent of other objects. No intersections have been computed. Still, I want the whiskers to be connected to the cat, so to achieve this, I first create an additional vertex splitting an existing edge, and then I'm gluing this new vertex to the base of the whisker. So I repeat this operation two times for the other whiskers, so I split the edge and glue it to the whiskers, and split the edge again and glue it to the whiskers. So the whiskers are not connected to the cat, but do not interfere with other edges, making the topology semantically correct. Okay, so for the whiskers on the right, I proceed almost exactly using the same method. I start by drawing the three whiskers with computation of intersections disabled. But this time, I want to connect them to the interior of the face. To achieve this, I create three additional vertices inside the face, like this. By displaying the underlying topology, we can see that the three vertices follow the movement of the face. All that is left to do is gluing the base of the whiskers to these vertices. Again, this correctly represents the desired topology of the whiskers. All right, finally, let's create the last leg of the cat. So uh, what I'm going to do first uh, is to duplicate some of those edges to save some time and not draw this geometry again. So I select those edges and I copy paste them. So because uh, VGC support overlapping, it's really easy to move them around. So I'm going to reduce the size uh, of these edges by creating a new vertex and deleting the unwanted uh, length. So now I connect the leg to the main body of the cat as we did for the whiskers. So we split this edge and glue it to the leg. So the leg is now connected to the main body. So now uh, let's select a brown color and with the paint buckets, uh, let's click on the leg to create a new face. The last step is to bring this leg to a more appropriate depth position by selecting the main body and bringing it to the foreground. So this completes the creation of these cats. An important point here is that we maintain a valid and meaningful topology at all time. So let's describe this topology now. The simplest objects in our complex are vertices. A vertex is simply a point in a canvas. We also have edges, which are curves in the canvas. There are two types of edges. The first type is the open edge, which has a start and an end vertex. Notice that it is possible for the start and end vertex to be equal. The second type of edge is the closed edge, which does not have end vertices at all. Another object is the half edge, which is the data of an edge and a given orientation. This half edge is an open half edge since it refers to an open edge, while this one is a closed half edge, referring to a closed edge. Another object is the cycle, which is a list of consecutive half edges starting and ending at the same point. More specifically, this cycle is called a non-simple cycle because it is a list of open half edges. Another type of cycle is the simple cycle, which is a cycle composed of a unique closed half edge. In addition, we introduce the notion of Steiner cycle, which is a cycle reduced to a unique vertex. Finally, we define a face as a list of cycles. Here we have one face with a unique cycle uh, composed of two half edges. And here is another example of a face with a unique cycle. By using additional cycles, 
we can represent holes in the face. Finally, Steiner cycles can be used to attach an edge, such as this whisker, to the face. Now that we have a representation for the topology, let's talk about how to edit it. We introduce a canonical set of topological operators, which are glue vertices and edges, cut edges and faces, and their inverse, unglue and uncut. We show here the result of gluing two vertices, cutting an edge, cutting a face, and finally, ungluing a selection of vertices and edges. Glue, unglue, and cutting edges are relatively easy to implement. But because we allow edges to overlap, it turns out that cutting a face is actually a very interesting problem to solve. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. So, <clears throat> Let's consider first uh, a very simple example. Here we have a complex made of a vertex V1, another vertex V2, one edge E1 starting at V1 and ending at V2, and one edge E2 starting at V2 and ending at V1. Finally, we have a face F made of a unique cycle defined by the two half edges E1 plus and E2 plus. E1 plus is a notation to represent the half edge uh, referring to E1 with the orientation from V1 to V2. So we would use E1 minus for the uh, opposite orientation. The top figure here represents the geometry of the complex, while the bottom represents its topology. For conciseness, let's only focus on the face for now. So the desired result of Cutting F is shown here. And in fact, we can use this example to define the cut at the topological level. So it's an algebraic operation which transforms one face into two faces by splitting the cycle into two cycles by inserting a new edge E cut. This definition relies purely on topology and is valid no matter what the geometry is. Now, let's consider the following complex. At a first glance, it seems very different from our previous example, but in fact, the two are topologically equal. They can be obtained from one another by simple deformation of the edges. So since their topology is equal, let's naively apply the same cut operator as before. So here is the results, which is kind of weird. So even though it is topologically valid, it is not exactly what we would have expected. Instead, something like this would be much more appropriate. So it feels like we've discovered another algorithm cut prime more adapted to this geometry. Indeed, that's exactly the case. So there is not a unique valid cut, and actually not even two, but a rather large number of non-equivalent cuts, which are all valid. The existence of these alternative cuts is a consequence of allowing the edges to overlap. Indeed, overlapping allows a face to look like a non-planar surface, such as a Möbius strip or a torus, and cutting such non-planar surfaces is not as trivial as cutting planar surfaces. One important technical contribution of our research is an exhaustive classification of the different cuts that can be applied. So you can find this classification in the technical report. But in practice, the first cut is really the one that you want in 99% of the cases. So let's now uh, show some results of uh, our approach. So it can very easily represent edges shared by three or more faces. With an elegant trick, it can represent self-overlapping faces. And it can naturally capture the topology of twisted strips or Möbius strips or this Necker cube here. 
And what's important here is that it's not only able to create those objects, but you can easily modify those objects or animate them. So here we present two illustrations achieved by our users. Something still to be done is to improve the rendering of vector graphics complexes, uh, since uh, right now our naive approach sometimes leads to various artifacts. And finally, extending this structure to represent a 2D animation with topology that changes in time is an exciting future direction. To conclude, we introduced the vector graphics complex, which faithfully represents the topology of most vector graphics illustrations. If you want to try it, simply go to vpaint.org to download our implementation vpaint. This completes the presentation. I record that the PowerPoint slides presented in this video can be downloaded at the research project webpage indicated in the description of this video, where you can also find the SIGGRAPH paper and the technical report. Thank you for watching.